The ice ages affected and shaped the landscapes, but sometimes the clues are so gigantic it's hard to recognize them. In Washington state, in the Grand Coulee Canyon, are the channeled scablands. For years, a succession of scientists tried to work out what could have caused erosion on this scale. USGS scientist Richard Waite is the latest investigator. This rock, the size of a three-story house, looks like it's part of the bedrock, part of this basalt that forms this vast landscape. But the structure in the basalt is horizontal, as you can see, whereas the structure in this rock is vertical. In other words, this big rock has been moved. But the biggest clue in the landscape is the landscape itself. This gorge is carved in basalt, one of the hardest of rocks. It ends in a sheer cliff, 400 feet high, and it's in the shape of an enormous horseshoe. It's like the gorge below Niagara Falls, but this, Dry Falls, is fully two Niagara's high and three wide. Waite is continuing the work begun by geologist J. Harlan Bretz in 1923. Bretz was the first to say that this entire landscape was a gigantic riverbed formed by 3,000 square miles of the Columbia Plateau being swept away. No one believed him because the scale was so huge, but he was certain that the only explanation for this scale of damage was an enormous flood. The whole area was obliterated and changed forever as the torrent flooded through. Even on the top of the cliffs, the water was over a hundred feet deep. The basalt cliffs are amongst the hardest structures found in nature. Resistant to weathering and erosion, these walls could only have been cut by an enormous body of water. One by one, these columns of frozen lava were quarried from the rock face and carried away by the raging torrent, causing the wall to retreat and the cataract to widen. So it was accepted that this is how the channeled scablands were shaped. But an important part of the mystery remained. Just where could all that colossal, earth-shattering volume of water have come from? A hundred miles to the east, geologist Joseph T. Pardee had described an enormous Ice Age lake Glacial Lake Missoula. This lake held in some 600 cubic miles of water. 600 cubic miles is all of present-day Lake Erie, plus all Lake Ontario. The lake was held in by an ice dam that had crossed the Clark Fork River and dammed it. The lake rose 2,000 feet deep against the side of the ice dam, but there was no evidence to link the lake with the Channel Scabland. In 1939, Pardee discovered a series of giant ripples. These are like sand ripples on the beach, but they are of enormous size, hundreds of feet apart, 10 feet high and more, and they're composed of gravel. Such a feature could only indicate a swift outflow from Glacial Lake Missoula. The gigantic ice dam held back the water until it reached a critical level. When it was 1,800 feet deep, the pressure of the water was so immense that it forced its way through the base of the ice dam. Having found a weakness, the icy waters raced on, widening the split and weakening the dam catastrophically. The waters of the entire lake were released in a devastating discharge. This discharge was 10 times the flow of all the world's rivers. That's almost beyond belief. In 1926, a freak flood created a 100-foot-deep canyon, 200 miles away in the Walla Walla Valley. It revealed many layers of silt. Waite realized that this area must have been in the path of the great floodwaters that formed the channeled scablands. This white layer here is an ash that we know is from Mount St. Helens. We've analyzed it chemically, mineralogically, and it clearly came from Mount St. Helens. And we know its date. By radiocarbon dating, we know that this is 15,000 years old, approximately. Therefore, we have a beautiful timeline running through this section of 15,000 years. 
The ash could only have fallen after the flood had passed and the sediments settled, yet it's covered by many layers of sediments, 39 in all. This was the final piece of evidence that explained the creation of the scablands. The catastrophic outburst flood must have happened time and again. Once each flood had left its mark, the vast glacial dam would advance and the waters of Lake Missoula would start to rise again, continuing the cycle of flood followed by calm. Only when the time of the ice was over did the flood stop. <laughs> 